Shalom Israel. I'd like to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashim Yahushai, Bashim Rakakwadash, the Buanas of the Apostles, and the Elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to like out there doing this work of faith and labor of love and truth and sincerity. All right, now I want to get into a quick lesson based upon this um, brief series that I want to start based upon this book by this author name of Colin Murphy. And the book is entitled, Are We Rome? The Fall of the M of an Empire and the Fate of America. All right. And, you know, I just want to start off by reading, um, <clears throat> reading a portion of the book. Well, uh, actually the back of the book real quick, <clears throat> just to give uh, a little bit of what it's about. And it says, the rise and fall of ancient Rome has been on American minds from the beginning of our Republic. Today, we focus less on the Roman Republic than on the empire that took its place. Depending on who's doing the talking, the history of Rome serves as either a triumphal call to action or a dire warning of imminent collapse. In Are We Rome, the esteemed author cut in the esteemed editor and author Colin Murphy reveals a wide array of similarities between the two empires. Blink the blinkered insular culture of our capitals, the debilitating the uh, debilitating effect of bribery in public life, the paradoxical issue of borders and the weakening of the body po uh, politic through various forms of privatization. Murphy persuasively argues that we most resemble Rome in the burgeoning corruption of our government and in our arrogant ignorance of the world outside. Two things that must be changed if we are to avoid Rome's fate. All right, so let me read this here. Revelations 17 and 10. And there are seven kings, five are falling, and one is and the other is yet to come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth and is of the seventh and goeth into perdition. Okay. So these empires were empires that came before America. And when it said, and one is, <clears throat> it said, and Five are fallen, and one is, and the other is yet to come. That one that was during that time was Rome, and the other that is yet to come, it's its second leg, America, okay, aka modern day Rome. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. That's why the scriptures say, because um, he you know if you have but a short season, okay, that short space, this is the time frame in which America is allotted. Okay, to reign as that second leg. And that's why in verse 11, it continues to say what? And the beast that was and is not, even he is of the eighth. Even he is the eighth and is of the seventh and go of interpretation. Because it's pretty much should be common knowledge amongst most people that America is uh, the second leg of Rome or is an updated version of old Rome. OK, and we see that clearly, you know, from so many different um, things that are that America betrays, you know, its laws, its policy, democracy, you know, uh, the statues, you know, homosexuality, you know, all of these various things uh, engulf what Rome was truly all about. And that's what America gets their so-called uh principles from is nothing but all immorality you know that goes hand in hand with the so-called white man all right so let me go to um the given example <clears throat> in the book of first maccabees eight eighth chapter and um yeah i'm gonna start off at verse one it says <clears throat> first maccabees eight and one now Judas had heard of the Romans and that they were mighty and valiant men and such <clears throat> and such as would love 
and Slake, and such as would lovingly accept all that join themselves unto them and make a league of amity with them, <clears throat> with all them, with all that came unto them, and that they were men of great valor. It was told him also of their wars and noble acts which they had done among, among the Galatians, and how they had conquered them and brought them under tribute, and what they had done in the country of Spain for the winning of the mines of the silver and gold which was there, and that by their policy, okay, and patience they had conquered all the place, though it were very far from them, and the kings also that came against them from the uttermost part of the earth, till they had discomfited them, and given them a great overthrow, so that the rest did give them tribute every year. Okay, so we see how in awe, you know, that the known world at that time was of the Romans for what they had accomplished. But this is all <laughs> what due to prophecy, you know. And when we look at what policy, what does America carry? They carry policies, you know. Rome changed the face of the earth, you know, for all governments and things to be more structured and for America to embody everything that Rome is. We look up the word policy is what? A course of prince or principle of action adopted or proposed by a government, party, business, or individual. So this is what made Rome stand out. And you go into the Greek word, uh, polis, police, citizen, citizenship, uh, police, uh, uh, civil administration, because that's pretty much what Rome had. They had a they had a body, you know, that that um, set up laws and, you know, the, the council, the Senate and different things like that, that set up laws. So here we go down to uh, Salem first Maccabees eight and. Um, and I'm going to start at uh, I'm gonna start at verse 10. It says, and that they having knowledge thereof sent against them a certain captain and fighting with them slew many of them and carried away captives their wives and their children and spoiled them and took possession of their lands and pulled down their strongholds and brought them to be their servants unto this day it was told him besides how they destroyed and brought under their dominion all the kingdoms and isles that at any time resisted them but with their friends and such as relied upon them they kept amity this is what america does okay anybody that resists <laughs> the will <laughs> of America and their so-called democracy, you know, this capitalistic country, anything or anyone that goes against America, what do they do? They take them out. But anyone that stays in league and they need them for said thing or said thing, what they keep them in their back pocket because what America is the known power of the earth. But these other nations are doing what they're creeping up, you know, all due to what prophecy, you know. Um, but with their friends and such as relied upon them, they kept enmity. And that's the main thing with America. If, if it's not that they need you for something or they, they looking to you, you know, uh, as, as your big brother, you know, they want to be everybody's big brother. They want to look over everybody. You know, they want this country, this country, that country, all these various countries across the globe to need them and to want them for their resources. Yeah, they barter with other nations, but they want to reign, remain supreme so that all other nations depend on them. This is why they go into these other territories and other countries and sacking for oil and sacking for this and sacking for that, man. You know, that's the primary reason why. Right. Uh, and still in verse 12, and that they had conquered kingdoms both far and now, and so much as all that heard of their name were afraid of them. Also that whom they would help to a kingdom, those reign, and whom again they would they displace. Finally, that they were greatly exalted. Okay, so <laughs> this is this was just what I was saying. This is everything that America does. Anybody who's in rain, you know, and, and basically they don't see fit or they looking like, oh, this country is in tyranny uh, by this uh, 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 ruler and he's not doing right by the people. So we got to come in and rescue the people and appoint somebody else, basically appoint a puppet, you know, that's going to 
do everything that America says for taking out the previous ruler and catapulting him into position to rule over the people. This is what they do. This is America's whole MO. This was Rome's MO, okay? To keep people in line, to keep people in pocket, all right? Read that again. Verse 13, also that whom they would help to a kingdom, those reign, and whom again they would, they displace. Finally, that they were greatly exalted. Yet, for all this, none of them wore a crown or was clothed in purple to be magnified thereby. Moreover, how they had made for themselves a senate house, wherein 320 men sat in council daily, consulting all way for the people. To the end, they might be well ordered, and that they committed their government to one man every year, who ruled over all their country, and that all were obedient to that one, and that there was neither envy nor emulation among them. This is the basis off of what America sets its foundation off of. This is why you have the Senate, the Congress, so on and so forth. They built everything, their whole entire structure, off of the ways of Rome, okay? This why this is the second leg of Rome. So going into this book, how it says the title is what are we Rome? Yes, America is Rome, not we because we not down with this society, but America is that second leg of Rome. OK. <clears throat> and this is all by the will of what prophecy going into. Um. Revelation 17 and 17. <clears throat> For the Most High have put it in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and to give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of the Most High shall be fulfilled. The Most High have put it in their hearts to fulfill his will. So this is what this is all is about. You know, this all plays out according to prophecy. It's not just because America just some a, a great place and that they can never be taken down and you know, this will be the last a uh, 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 great place you'll ever see upon the face of the earth. No, that is the kingdom to come. That's what that's going to be. OK, that is what that's going to be. All right. And also just real quick, going into the book of um, Revelations <clears throat> 13. I'm going to just get straight to the point. Um, verse three. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. And his daily wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. Okay. All the world is wondering after America. Okay. Ultimately, you know, the beast is the EU, NATO and everything like that. But who sits on that beast? Who is that, 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 that woman that sits upon that beast? And that is America. Okay. And. The one that were wounded to death, that was Rome. But what they came into power again, reigning in modern day time, that's still that same superpower as America. And that's is what this is all about, man. But people don't understand these different things and they truly don't understand prophecy. But this is just, you know, uh, the beginning uh, intro uh, that I want to do for this series because uh, Lord's will want to dive more into this book. And, you know, as I read chapters and chapters, I'm just going to break down certain parts and compare the similarities with other facts of how America is Rome and show everything and just, you know, blow this whole wide thing open. It's already well known, obviously, but, you know, just for those who don't have that understanding, those are the hopeful elect that is seeking that understanding. That is what we do this for, you know, um, amongst, you know, uh, attempting to. Uh, uh, be diligent and uh, hopefully to seal salvation for ourselves through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh All right, so with that, you know, I hope the segment was edifying. I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Kakwadash, the Buwana to the apostles in the Elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to like out there doing this work of faith and labor of love and true sincerity. Shalom.